patience. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Between the Horns. It's a week 18 edition, and it's presented by your Southern California Toyota dealers, as always, proud partner of the LA Rams. I'm JB Long. MJD, sometimes you just need to take two. Let's hope this is the one. Hey, listen, I'm all for it, man. However long it takes, let's get to this week. The week is flying by. It's almost Sunday, and there's so much on the line. I can't wait to see how the Rams perform. All right, and DeMarco Farr, our Super Bowl champion, is with us. 49ers week always highlights his calendar, but especially when all of the stakes are on the line. DeMarco, an NFC West crown and the number two seed in the NFC with a win. I'm trying to keep the latter in mind, JB, but, you know, it's it's all about I can't stand them and I can't stand losing to them. And I hope I I hope I properly conveyed that to all the young guys coming through like it was conveyed to me. This is a different week. This is San Francisco week. This is 49er week. Get right. No smiles. All business. And because it is such an important week, we have a special guest, our 2022 NFL Hall of Fame finalist, Tori Holt. There he is. Tori, great to see you, man. Congratulations. This is the year. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I am. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm pumped up. Uh, very thankful. Very humble uh, to be a Hall of Fame finalist in 2022. It's my third straight year. Um, and shouts out to Demarco, who's a teammate of mine, and, hey, hey. and all of my teammates and coaches that have helped me, and as well as uh, Maurice Jones Drew, who I played with down in Jacksonville. All the guys that I played with and, and competed with, uh, all helping me to get to this point, man. So I'm uh, extremely excited. And as you said, JB, this is my year i believe it and i mean I, we all wish it had happened sooner i think it should have happened sooner, but <laughs> if it is 22 if it's the year the rams host the super bowl and that Corey Holt goes in the hall of fame all good right it was destined to be yeah i mean that i mean that's like a storybook ending right um you know, being drafted to st louis rams and then you know the, the Super Bowls that we've all participated in the Super Bowls this team the LA Rams have participated in and then now the Super Bowl being in Los Angeles we got a damn good football team um that's in and I, I think that has all of the talent all of the ability just as any other teams to uh participate in the Super Bowl but doing it in Los Angeles and then the Hall of Fame and all that's there it will be like a storybook ending for sure awesome all right, let's take a quick lap around the horn and tie up Baltimore, right? That come from behind win for the second week in a row. The Rams overcome three giveaways, this time not taking the lead until their final offensive drive. Maurice, back to you. What did they prove to themselves? What did they prove to you as they pursue this NFC West crown? Well, first thing is you, you prove that you could win ugly. And winning is hard no matter how you do it, but you found a way to win, like you said, overcoming those three turnovers. But there's three things that I took from it. The defense playing really well, giving you opportunities, multiple opportunities to come back, uh, stopping the run, affecting the quarterback. They did an awesome job with that. The running game, balancing out this offense when they needed it. Sonny Michelle showing up uh, to get that touchdown was huge. And then last but not least, the stars. The stars showed up in Baltimore. Baltimore is not known for you know all these stars to be all over the place, but Odell Beckham Jr., Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Jalen Ramsey all showed up, and they showed up big. Hmm. DeMarco, we need the uh, real Matthew Stafford to stand up, right? I mean, perfect in the second half after some early miscues. Is he getting them all out of his system before um, before the Niners come to town? What are we thinking about, about nine? Man, I hope so. I really do. And I think this is the Matthew Stafford. We're just going to have to live with it. Um, you know, he, he's the guy that, uh, you know, He's aggressive, and sometimes that that spills over in trying to do too much. Uh, some of those things, like we said, some of those picks he threw, they're great up until the ball left his hand. I mean, just some, you know, real elite quarterback play, and then just a bad decision, or you just miss one of there. But then to see his grit in the fourth quarter, in the second half in particular, to to bring it back and to not allow Baltimore to get that victory to bring the team back. That's not an easy place to win down there. Mm -hmm. And when you threw the turnover, we talked about this. That's going to take you three and a half quarters to dig yourself out of that turnover. That's how Harbaugh coaches. And they did that. They had to be letter perfect for long stretches. And they were, they got the ball in the end zone. Their defense, like Maurice said, helped, helped them out. But Matthew Stafford turning it around. Yeah. I like the one that finished the game, not the one that started the game. Yeah. Tori, which of those OBJ uh, catches were more impressive to you, the fourth down conversion or the touchdown? The fourth down conversion, uh, fourth and five. And what I thought 
Odell Beckham did a good job of, and you saw Matthew Stafford scan the field and come back to him late there. But I thought he did a really good job of netting the sticks. It was fourth and five. He went at least six or seven yards and stepped back to six or five in order to 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 get that first down. And then he did it with a guy hanging all over him and showing all hands. So Odell Beckham, with that grab, and I tweeted it out, with that grab, he is now on my all-hands team. He'll, he'll join Cooper Cup. He'll join Robert Woods. He'll join Emeka Amizi and some of the guys that are on that team. But I thought it was an outstanding job by Odell Beckham of understanding the sticks, netting the sticks, and then just showing aggressive, strong hands to complete that catch. Uh, can I ask a question, JB? How good do you think OBJ can be, Tori? Because, you know, it's one thing to see him from afar. Seeing him up close, he's bigger than what you think. And then watching him play, man, this dude's he's legit in his hands. How good can he be? Yeah, his hands are phenomenal. I mean, he has some of the better set of hands in the National Football League. It's been that way for a long time. You think back to the, the grab that he had with the New York Giants. Uh, his hands are fantastic. But I think Odell can be as good as he wants to be in this offense. It's an offense that's receiver friendly. He can still run. He can still get off the line of scrimmage. He can still penetrate the defense pretty quickly, fairly quickly. He can run all routes, double moves included. And then he has a coordinator in Sean McVay that I think can draw up things that are favorable for him. And then Matthew Stafford, as we know, you guys have mentioned it, as aggressive as he is, can make all throws on the football field. So I think Odell Beckham is fine. As long as he continues to stay engaged, continue to work, you see the communication that he and Matthew Stafford are having on the sideline. To me, that is a positive sign that Odell Beckham, as this season goes on, mm -hmm. starting on Sunday, and as they make their way into the playoffs, I think you're going to see him continue to make big plays for this football team. All right, while we're talking receivers, let's talk Triple Crown too. Maurice, uh, a small handful of players have ever won this honor outright. Cooper Cup would, in fact, be just the fourth in, since the merge in the Super Bowl era to do it. He's got huge leads in all the categories. Uh, we said last week he may not need to make another catch to complete the triple crown in the context of Sunday's game. How significant is this to you? I think this is huge. Um, when you go on a championship run, you need the superstar. You need the playmakers to go out there and make plays. And you talk about in that 99 year where the Rams won, Torrey made huge plays. Isaac Brook made huge plays. Marshall Folk broke records in that year. You need a guy that's going to break records and to have Cooper Cup and do the things that he's been able to do throughout the course of his career. And then for it to kind of be magnet, uh, ties right now where you're seeing all of him. We're not just seeing him run the option route out of the slot. You're seeing him, you know, be in the backfield, a lot of different things that we haven't been able to see. And so for me, uh, it's huge. And, and it's part of this journey. And I think, again, when you look at what the Bucks did last year, Tom Brady broke a lot of records last year. We didn't really talk about him, but he broke a lot of records on the way to a Super Bowl. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, when they went and won the year before, guess who broke a lot of records? Patrick Mahomes. And so when you have a guy that that continues to play at a high level for a whole season, it's part of that journey of going there. And it's it's one of the reasons you make it uh, to the Super Bowl and, and as far as you go. Tori, I've been watching you root for him all season throughout his yep. career. It feels like you want him to finish this, even if it takes an 18th game or an 18th week, a 17th game to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Cooper Cup. Uh, I was out, you know, out in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago and had a chance to sit down and spend some time with him, man. And, you know, his physical talents, we obviously see, but the mental part of it is what I had an opportunity to to to, to chat with him about and and how he sees and breaks down the game. That gives him the opportunity or he has, allows him the ability to get open at a rapid rate. You know, Cooper Cup was when he was in university, y'all, he was a four time first team All-American. Mm -hmm. He was very, very productive in university. And, 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 and it's carried on to the National Football League. And as I mentioned, Odell Beckham been in a favorable position, as all those offensive guys are in a favorable position, Cooper Cup is as well because Sean McVay knows how to use him. You can line him up in the slot. He can play outside. You can line him up in the backfield, get mismatches with, with him and linebackers or safeties that are box safeties. So they're doing a good job of putting him in, putting him in positions to win. But it's his physical, uh, physical mentality uh, that, to me, is – gotten him to this point think about it triple crown think about how strong this guy is from the core down to be able to every single weekend run the way that he runs make people miss uh run every route this dude is physical physical and mentally tough and we are witnessing history 
And I think this weekend against the 49ers, it's a meaningful game. Everybody's playing. It's best on best. So I think you'll see Cooper Cup at his best this weekend against the 49ers. See, JB, let me jump in. This is where I'm trying. I'm struggling, T, and I need your help. Um, where do I slot him? Because the gold standard for me, and I'm sure it was for you. I know it was for Isaac because we talked about it, was Jerry Rice, yeah. the receiver's receiver. What Cooper Cup is doing is different. You know, he's blocking. He's he's a football <laughs> player. So I think the more impressive thing for, for 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 me with Cooper Cup is his run after catch and how yes. physical he is. So, yes. I mean, I don't know where to slot him. I know what I want to say, but I can't say it. <laughs> When, well, I mean, play, that's a bad dude. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, no question. I mean, when you think about the history of our league and you guys are all mentioning Triple Crown, I mean, Jerry Rice, Sterling Sharp did it. Yeah. Steve Smith did it. Now Cooper Cubs did it. So uh, Calvin Johnson did it. So you got to rank him up there as one of the best singles, obviously one of the best single season um, uh, seasons that we've seen from a wide receiver. I mean, legitimately, I know people say, well, he's had 17 games. Well, I mean, that's something that he can't control. What he can control is going out every single weekend. Teams know that he's going to get the football and he still delivers. To me, and to me, that in itself is more impressive than the, the numbers are going to take care of themselves. But that to yeah. me is more impressive than anything. Teams I know agree. that he's well, going to get the football. And, and he still, still goes out and performs. At, <laughs> right. He still goes out and performs at a very high level. And DeMarco, you mentioned the, his ability to block. He loves blocking. One of the things that I had in, in the scouting report uh, with Cooper Cup is, and a lot of folks don't know this about him, is he's a tough football player. Like, he likes to mix it up. He's 6'2", 210 pounds. He's not a small guy. He loves mixing it up. And that helps him. In the passing game is what well. he understands. If I'm good running, if I'm good blocking and setting things up in the, in the run game, it's ultimately going to help me in the passing game. And we see that week in and week out. Last thing here. I was on the field walking around with my buddy who was a special teams coach for the Baltimore Ravens. And when he saw Cooper Cup, he was like, bro, that ain't him, is it? I said, bro, he's bigger than what you think he's he is. Huh? Think. He's, yeah, not, exactly. he's not a little dude. But, you know, again, when you 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 got to think, when you look at him and you see him on tape and you realize he's in the slot, who's in the slot? Smaller guys, quicker guys. They don't put those guys in there. Cooper Cup does a lot, a, a little bit of everything, and he does it really well. Scott and so I think that ends. is what makes – say it again? He blocks defensive ends. He's not afraid of a corner. Right. He's, a lead, he's your lead blocker on most runs when they're, when they're when he's blocking for Sonny Michelle on the edge. So he's blocking defensive ends. So to me, I, I think, yes, the triple crown – award is is well deserved but they need to make one for an all-around football player that does everything because he should win that one as well and, and to uh, and to uh, maurice his football iq i, I think mm. coach was talking about how he saw something in the field in the in the game and it opened up he, he saw where another receiver on the team would be open and he, he talked to coach about it and coach ended up call, calling it he's trying not only to get himself involved he's getting everybody else involved and i in my and i think it's going to take more than just Cooper Cup as they go down the stretch to win it. And I like the, I like the fact that he is seeing beyond himself mm -hmm. and seeing everything else for his teammates and saying to coach, hey, let's get this person the ball. We may be able to do this or we may be able to do that. To me, I just love his football IQ, his unselfishness. DeMarco, he could have played with us, man. I know. He could have played with us. I know. The way, uh, that, he approaches, the way yeah. that he approaches the game and how unselfish he is, he's a guy – that can play in any era of football because, as you guys have mentioned, he is a true football player. Well, here's the problem: which which guy are you putting on the bench for him? Well, it ain't ah. me, it ain't me for sure. And I know Isaac is going to say the same thing, and Oz and everybody else is going to say that. Ricky and everybody else is going to say the same thing. So those, they, 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 those guys that have to battle that out, but it definitely ain't going to be me. <laughs> guys, we're going to be asked about this season for the rest of our careers, right? And so. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a case to be made. It's one of the best receiving seasons in NFL history. Comparing across generations is very difficult to do. So I think where I'm going to land is the most complete receiving season that I've ever witnessed. And for all of the touchdowns and all of the catches and all of the yards, I go back to Thursday night football at Seattle in week five, when he dug Jamal Adams out of that hole and paved the way for Daryl Henderson to run into the red zone and eventually lead to a touchdown. That's taking on your division rival and a guy yep. that they traded first round capital for and, and erasing him and doing a part of your job that's not necessarily one that gets you paid or that gets you these accolades. But to me, that's kind of emblematic of the season and, and the career that he's had.
Now, we do need to get to the Niners, and I know we're going to talk a lot of defense there, but one other thought on offense, and MJD, I'll send it your way for the return of Cam Akers. Five oh. months move from an Achilles. Now he joins the team for their regular season finale. And for all the good that Sony Michelle has done, and he's done a ton, Cam Akers is different. And one, two, I love them together. JB, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just in awe. Right. I'm in awe of the fact that if you tear your Achilles this summer and you're back playing by January and wow. the way modern medicine wow. and the way surgeries are going and all those things to have someone back to be able to play in the playoffs. And then his true grit. I've been following him this whole time, his whole journey. Right. The the time in the, the treatment room, the time in um, uh, with the trainers and, and then in the in the film room studying and understanding that you have a chance, not saying that you can do it. <laughs> But you got a chance to make it right and then making that chance come true uh his running style his ability is going to be great uh all the reports that he's going to play get some carries this week to kind of get his legs going i think that's huge and then guess what you'll get daryl henderson back too now you have a three-headed monster going into the playoffs that's gonna be tough to deal with hmm. what about the move the rams uh made to you know open his window with three games to go in the regular season, probably knowing that he wasn't going to return until this week or next, but making sure he gets that accrual for later in life, like what that might mean to him as a professional. Do you think that makes way, like that gets attention around the league, that that helps build your reputation for things like free agency? It's less about the league. It's more about the guys but, in that locker room. That's right. right. Because we're there in there. We're, you got guys in there fighting their butts off, right? And 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 you know what? The business side is going to take care of the business side. The business side is always going to take care of the business. You may be here. You may not. But the fact that the Rams were like, listen, we want to help you out for down the road when you're done playing, that speaks volumes. Let Forget the league in your locker room, right? So yep. when you do get those free agents coming, guess what guys are going to talk about? Well, look, they're going to take care of you here in Los Angeles. Yep. We're not going to have none of this back and forth all this other stuff going on. They're going to take care of you. If you handle your business, they'll take care of you. And that's what Cam Akers did. And that's what the Rams have shown time after time after time. They showed it with Robert Woods who missed an incentive and they gave him his money anyway. Cause he was, <laughs> he was so close, right? Like that, that speaks volumes. Those yeah. things speaks volumes. And I, and again, I don't know if the Rams are going to be big in free agency. They never really have, but um, since that, that first year, Sean's kind of been here, they kind of stayed with the trade and, and things like that. But even with that, the guys in your locker room play that much harder because they know you'll take care of them. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I I agree. If I mean, if I can echo to that, I, I totally agree um, with with MJD on on that. I mean, it just it resonates through the locker room, and guys want to play for the organization. Guys want to play for Coach McVay because they know that he's looking out for their best interest beyond the game of football. Which I think is uh, I think that message was sent, and guys will run through a brick wall for an organization or for a coach that way when they know a coach. Uh, is looking out for them in that in that way. So uh, I thought it was outstanding. All right, let's get to the uh, the elephant in the between the horns conversation here. The San Francisco 49ers. It has been too long since the Rams have been right against their biggest rival, DeMarco. Now they collide at SoFi Stadium with a, a chance not only to clinch the division, but maybe if things go against the 49ers between the Saints and the Falcons to keep San Francisco out of the playoffs altogether. That would be great. Uh, you know, but rivalry aside, hatred aside for a hot minute, if there was ever a team that was built to beat the Rams, this is it. You know, the Rams have Aaron Donald, one of the best in the business. Um, the 49ers run the football. They're great at it. Um, while we waste time trying to figure out how to get the, the right matchup in the passing game, all they try to do is the simplest way to the end zone. Try to find a way to get their guard to reach your three technique or right. take him away by tossing the football. So uh, it, it's tough to play them offensively. And then defensively speaking, the way they rush the passer uh, versus an Andrew Whitworth with Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, if you can get tremendous pressure on the quarterback, that kind of takes away the passing game. So uh, division games are always tough. But when you look at if you wanted to build the, the perfect villain for what Sean McVay is serving up, it would be them. So Mm. There's no way to it. You got to go through them. You got to find a way to stop Kittle. You got to keep Bosa off Matthew Stafford, and you can't turn the ball over. Uh, this is going to be tough. They have a lot to play for, and so do you. This is the worst place to have them, but it's right. also the best place. You get through them. I don't think there's any stopping you. Your confidence will be through the roof. Tori, this is a different Rams group than Week Ten in mid-November too. I mean, you think back to that game, Odell had just arrived. He had no yep. practice under his belt, was thrust into a tough situation replacing Robert Woods. Vaughn Miller was dressing for the first time. 
we, we hardly knew that Greg Gaines was going to be the force of nature that he's become and so many other things. But likewise yeah. for San Francisco, they're still trying to decide who their starting quarterback is going to be, or at least Kyle Shanahan hasn't announced that publicly. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the, the Rams will will I don't think they're really concerned about that. I think it comes back to themselves and their preparation this week to go out and be at their best. They've lost to this football team five straight times. Mm. This is rivalry week. No mm. one's scared of each other. It's best on best. So to me, it's going to come down. It's going to be physical. It's going to come down to the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Who can win the one-on-one -on -one matchups longer? And Odell Beckham, yes, it was it was it was fresh when he first played the 49ers. He's a different player now. The Rams offensively, in my opinion, is different because there's a physical part of their football team now, particularly offensively, because of what Sony Michelle has done mm -hmm. in the last five or six weeks of how he's ran the football, been downhill, and he's shown you that he can get to the edge at times. So I think the Rams are coming into this game. Totally different than what they were. What was it, week 10 when they played the 49ers? Mm -hmm. Totally different offensively and defensively. And then they've also made some plays in special teams. Shouts out to Powell. Uh, he's that? made some plays in special teams. So that gives this, that the 49ers, in my opinion, have more to game plan for than what they did in week mm -hmm. 10. And then the Rams, confidence-wise, over the last five weeks winning, confidence is up. And I agree with DeMarco. If they win this game, certainly their confidence should be off the chain. You were you were there, you remember what happened when we beat them for the first time in '99? Yes, it was over from there. Absolutely, yep. that was it. it we got the money. It was, the it, we did, and 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 yep. you know, I was a rookie, so I didn't. I I knew we lost seven rookie. straight. Seven. Right. It seven. Yeah, it was crazy, <laughs> and 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 I just remember that week leading into that game, and just how. I mean, we were we were serious, and we had fun and whatnot, and the intensity was there, but it went to another level that week, and I just. For, again, as a rookie, I just couldn't quite understand it. But as the years went on, I understood why guys took it to another level. There's two football teams that clearly don't like each other. Yeah. Both have something to play for this weekend. So I'm expecting a very physically Sorry. good football game. What do you think of Debo? Is he on your all hands? Yeah. That's, that's, that's another dude that's killing it in this division. Yeah. He hasn't quite made the all hands team yet. But Debo Samuels is a problem. You know, I was on I, myself and Kirk Morrison do a radio show every Wednesday called Rams House, and Darius Williams was on last night, and oh. he was just talking about how much of a problem Debo Samuels can be out of the backfield running the ball, but in the slot. And Debo Samuels is also a guy that they can put out wide at the X or Z. He has that kind of potential. I was at the Senior Bowl, and I was actually working with the San Francisco 49ers and their staff uh, during the Senior Bowl, so I happen to have a chance to see Debo Samuels every That's single a big day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> thick, thick guy, not tall, thick guy, yeah. very competitive, got a mean streak about him. He dominated the senior bowl. Wow. wow. Dominated the senior bowl every single day in practice. And I knew then, I said, if the 49ers get an opportunity to take him, they're going to take him because they saw firsthand mm. what type of player he was. And they saw him in the meeting rooms and in the film session. So, no, Debo yeah. Samuels is one of my favorites. He is a problem. The Rams are going to have to make sure they tackle him and get him to the ground. That's Frank Every Gore receiver. That's what I said. That's Frank Gore receiver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can dig that. I can dig that. <laughs> Tor, the physical element that you brought up with respect to this matchup, I don't think back in week 10, the Rams in good conscience could have said, we have the best offensive and defensive line combination in the sport. I think as we wind down this regular season, you can make a real case run blocking, pass pro, everything front seven for the Rams. I think in combination, they might have the best offensive and defensive front in tandem going into the postseason, and, and you can certainly win with that. Don't think that was the case back at midseason. And, J.D., because we've got a visual on you for those of us watching uh, on YouTube or on social platforms, I know you can count the concepts that Kyle Shanahan is going to throw at the Rams <laughs> on, on one or maybe two hands. You, you go – you go ahead. Show us how many. Are, are you are you ready for this? Okay. Right. First, they're gonna run. They're gonna line up one way. Set Aaron Donald to one side. Motion shift to the other side. Tall sweep. That's one. <laughs> then they're gonna put Debo Samuel in the backfield and run inside zone out of shotgun. That's two. Passing game. They're gonna run in breaking routes because again, that's what their quarterbacks throw best, right? So that's three. And then you may get a, a jet sweep. Here or there. I mean, that's really what we're going to see in the situation. And then in the red zone, they're going to throw corners to Kittle. That's all they're going to do. 
Wow. And, and I think all we've heard is rivalry week. But when you go back to it, and if our fans, you played high school football, you played youth football, when you know someone, when you know that opponent, that rival, when you, that across town school, you know what they're going to run. Yep. It has zero to do with coaching at this yep. point. It's all about will and who wants to smash the other person. And that's what the Niners did in week 10. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, they were highlighting Kittle, Pancake, no Von Miller. Day. Right. Yeah. They were highlighting yeah. Debo Samuel running through guys. They were highlighting all these other things. If you're the Rams and we and the Rams made great adjustments playing the Cardinals the second time. I can't wait to see what adjustments they make this week. Now, Von Miller is is uh better against the run than he was obviously that first game back. Um, the Rams are much more physical uh offensively, and they have obviously Odell's a little bit more equipped to go out there. And we saw if you guys were watching that Thursday night game. I guess the Tennessee Titans, you saw what A.J. Brown was able to do against the Niners there, just kind of take over the game. I You have two of those guys that can do it, so I expect to see that as well. But at the end of the day, it's going to be about who wants to tackle and who wants to block. Okay. Who wants to run into someone full speed over and over again to win this <laughs> game? That's what it's going to come down to. And that's what you – and DeMarco, I, everyone – like, Tori, you remember this? When we played the Colts, it was like – I'm like, look, we already know who we're playing. We're playing mm -hmm. Peyton Manning, okay? Yep. It, it is what mm -hmm. it is. Like, who is willing to go ahead and run through whoever we got to to win this game, right? And that's the mindset you have to have in these rivalry weeks. Um, there's going to be some schematics in there, but you know the Niners on all defense are going to play man-to-man, -man, press man, or cover three. That's what they're going to do. They're not going to run anything else. They're going to rush straight up the field. They're going to try to bull rush you, all that stuff. That's what you're going to get. Can you physically stop that? And can you physically beat that? That's what I it's going to come down to. We had to beat them. Yeah, <laughs> we had to beat them. We had to beat them or, yeah, <laughs> we just had to. Not again. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> Tori, last word, final thought on this game? No, I'm excited, man. I, I think it's a great opportunity for, for the Rams being at home. I, I, hope, the, I hope the fans come out um, and, and, and show uh, a great – there we go, DeMarco – show a great deal of support uh, to this football team. They can certainly use the energy uh, from the crowd. And then execution. Can the Rams play clean offensively? As DeMarco Ooh. mentioned earlier, as you guys mentioned earlier, not turning the football over. That's somewhat been an issue with, with Matthew Stafford here in this five-game uh, win streak. Can they can they play clean? And then defensively, can they tackle those skilled players uh, for the San Francisco 49ers? Because as Maurice just mentioned, we, we know what we're going to get. You're going to get a heavy dose of Debo Samuels. Oh You're going to get a heavy dose of, Gary, uh, of George Kittle, and that's where they're going to try to beat you. And then can the Rams make a play on special teams, a punt return, a block scoop and score, a uh, block field goal somewhere on special teams. An onside in. kick recovery. <laughs> onside kick recovery. I think to me that's that could be the difference in this football game. But I'm excited about the opportunity that this football team has to win, clinch the division, get some home field playoff games, get the confidence that they need going into the playoffs. One question, real quick, before we go, Tori, what do you do as a receiver when your quarterback <laughs> is all over the place early? You need this guy for the rest of the game, but he's out of – how do you handle that as a receiver? Well, for one, just make sure that I'm doing my job and getting open and being available for him, and then going over and saying, you know, and talking – not a whole lot of talking, but just, hey, you know, keep it going. Look, at some point during the game, we're going to need you to make some throws. If you need me, I'm available. I'm always available. I can help you get out of this rut. But no, these guys, he's got enough playmakers around him where he does not have to force it, let the game come to him. Coach McVay will put him in favorable situations, but he's still got to be aggressive, but mm -hmm. he's got to be smart with the football. So those are some of the things that I would say to him, DeMarco. And then again, making sure as a receiver, when we do throw the football, that we are making ourselves open and available for the QB. Hall of Fame finalist, Torrey Holtz. Let's get that gold jacket. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, guys. So special. You Thanks for spending the time with us. And JD, DeMarco Parr. <laughs> and thanks to our audience for tuning in this week to Between the Horns, presented by your Southern California Toyota dealers, proud partner of the LA Rams. A couple final business items to get to as we anticipate this regular season finale against the San Francisco 49ers at SoFi Stadium. First, Black-owned restaurants are important local businesses in every community, and it's important we help them since the pandemic has made it harder for these local institutions to thrive. That's why the Los Angeles Rams and Pepsi are teaming up to cover your meal today, January 6th, starting at 10 a.m. and until 2 p.m. at the Serving Spoon in Inglewood. 
10 a.m., 2 p.m., Serving Spoon, Inglewood. Wear your Rams gear, support local Black-owned restaurants, and go to pepsidigin.com, pepsidigin.com to learn more. You must be present during those hours of the promotion, and customers are served on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. And then finally, Rams fans, you got one more chance in the regular season to get inside SoFi Stadium. It's an NFC West divisional matchup against the Niners. The Rams have a chance to clinch the West and the two seed in the NFC playoff picture. To get your tickets for SoFi Stadium to experience the Rams house this weekend, just go to the Rams.com slash tickets, the Rams.com slash tickets. For Tori, for MJD, for DeMarco, I'm JB Long. Have a good rest of your week. We hope to see you on Sunday at SoFi.